Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Originally, I was going to do this peanut special on Super Bowl weekend, but I decided to take a break. And no, I didn't watch the Super Bowl this year. In fact, I refused. I hardly ever watch any sports anyway. But I did hear that it's the worst Super Bowl ever. <laughs> didn't see it coming. <laughs> so, I'm not surprised. But our team... The Los Angeles Rams lost against the New England Patriots. So they won another victory. Go figure. But I mostly just watched some of the commercials that aired on the Super Bowl. Um, sometimes I do get a kick out of the halftime show, but always I wouldn't bother because sometimes they'll play some horrible music from all these pop stars that we get these days. Some awful ones, too. So I say skip it. <laughs> well, now I have to deal with a similar situation here because I'm going to be reviewing It's Your First Kiss, Charlie Brown, which aired originally on Monday, October 24th, 1977 on CBS at 8 o'clock. And this is the first peanut special where the little redhead girl, Charlie Brown's crush, is finally shown in full form and even reveals her real name because she's the homecoming queen of a homecoming football game and Charlie Brown is her escort hard to believe he's pretty lucky what well, seems to be <laughs> now this review is going to be divided in a way because while I do like the special because it is worth watching and it's really cool to see that at least Charlie Brown does get the girl. However, it does have flaws. So it does become a problem. And this is why. Now, um, judging by the audience reaction to because everybody had a reaction to this special as well. Now, we all know that the little red hat girl was never seen on the comic strips. And was never revealed by her real name. Because even Charles M. Schultz himself admitted that he could not draw her to readers' satisfaction. Much less his own. But the whole storyline of the TV special somehow forced that issue by the producers. So they figured, why not? And this is, of course, where we're going to get to... Um, you know, after I review this. So let's start right now. Stars Aaron Skelly as Charlie Brown, Daniel Anderson as Linus Van Pelt, Michelle Mueller as L Lucy Van Pelt, Laura Plantine as Pepper and Patty, Ronald Hendricks as Franklin, and Bill Melendez as Snoopy and Woodstock. With some of the peanut skeins and non-speaking roles, of course. Yeah, it's created and written by Charles M. Schultz and it's directed by Phil Roman. The special begins during homecoming at Burt Wirt School, yeah, the elementary school, where Charlie Brown, Linus, Lucy, and the rest of the Peanuts game had attend to. Both Charlie Brown and and Linus are on the escorts for the homecoming queen and her court. And during the homecoming parade, Linus tells Charlie Brown that he will be the escort of the homecoming queen. And that turned out to be, you guessed it, the little redhead girl named Heather. He's even more shocked when Linus tells him that about the homecoming tradition that he has to escort Heather and gives her a kiss before the dance. So this is going to be Charlie Brown's first kiss. But yes, he hyperventilates and he falls off the float. The homecoming game begins with Snoopy being the referee and Charlie Brown as the kicker. Of course, uh, Woodstock is, is televising the entire um, parade, 
yet alone the football game. So it's really cool because you know she, he gets to uh, film all of this while Snoopy is like, <laughs> yeah, you know, act like he's the helicopter and just rides around. But unfortunately, even for a real football game with many speculators around, Lucy suddenly becomes the place kick setter. Because we now know how that's going to turn out, and this is where it becomes predictable. He just can't resist by humiliating Charlie Brown throughout the entire game. And they're actually going against uh, the big team, too, with Pepper and Patty being the team captain. And yes, this is where they're playing on beating against the the big team from the other schools. It gets worse. Every time uh, Lucy uh, holds the football, she pulls it away, and Charlie Brown goes up in the air, lands flat on his back, and was being crushed by all the football team. And yes, he gets blamed for it throughout four fucking times. Yeah, I mean, with that particular gag, she just wouldn't stop. But yes, Pepper and Patty suddenly, you know, blames him and everyone else for that. With 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter, he has a chance to become a hero and be able to kick the field goal for the win. But once again, Lucy just continues to pull away the football. She, she just wouldn't stop. You know, he even wants to, to use the the T just so he can kick the ball exactly the way football players does it but Lucy just doesn't bother because even Charlie Brown knew that that Lucy was crazy so sad to say the team just lost for by one point one point ridiculous in spite of the humiliation Charlie Brown still rides at the dance to the surprise of his teammates, yes, Lucy, who's the real culprit of the team's loss, suddenly recruits uh, him, along with Pepper and Patty and Frida. And they thought, oh, it would be better if he didn't show up at all. But he does remain faithful to his duty, and decided to escort Header to the middle of the dance floor, which... But it, he, you know, he started feeling very shaky and nervous because he actually is going to do it. And when he finally gets his first kiss on, on the cheek, that's when things started to change. That Charlie Brown's going around flying up in the air, <laughs> in the sky, until he fell all the way down into his bed. So thinking that the whole thing might as well just be a dream. But it turns out that it isn't a dream. Because even though he doesn't remember anything that happened, Linus actually explains to him that, yes, you know, during all of this that happened on one day, that yes, after <laughs> Charlie Brown uh, got the kiss header, that he became the wild of the party. So he started doing the chicken dance and all this other stuff that... I guess, wow, maybe he had too much punch or everything that caused this, or the nervousness that he got just by not remembering everything. So it's sort of like memento here. <laughs> but in his disbelief, he even replies by saying, What is it good to do anything, Linus, if you can't remember what you did? But, at least by his satisfaction, at least it was his first kiss. So... There you go. <laughs> okay, now this is where I'm going to get my reaction straight. And I know uh, the audience would felt the same way that I would do. I first saw the special on Nickelodeon when it first aired as part of the Snooper Bowl weekend on your on Nickelodeon Charlie Brown. Yeah, this was the block that they had. So this was the first time Nickelodeon finally plays all the Charlie Brown specials and many others. 
Only one exception was they couldn't play um, a Charlie Brown Christmas, though. So, yeah, that was CBS' uh, job to do so. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the problem. First of all, Birchwood School is an elementary school. So how would they have a homecoming dance, yet alone a football team? That makes no sense. That usually happens in high school. But I know, you know, in, in the animation world, everything could be unrealistic. So I guess that's the thing. Now, second, this is the big one. Pepper and Patty has got to be the worst team captain, yet alone coach, of this entire team. Because who would be stupid enough to hire Lucy to be the ball holder? They could have hired someone else to do it, and it would have been so much better. They would have won this entire team if they didn't have Lucy to join in. Because everyone knows, because this is how predictable it is, that Lucy is going to pull away the football and Charlie Brown's gonna go up in the air, land flat on his back, and kills himself. And she did it not once, not twice, not even the first time either, but four fucking times. It's ridiculous. You know? Yes. I mean Charlie Brown had made some mistakes. Big deal. Everybody makes mistakes. But this is ridiculous why you know, he takes all the blame for this entire game. All because of fucking Lucy. And he and she gets away with murder, too. And, and on top of that, she actually really cools him. Along with Pepper and Patty and Frida. It, it's, it's bullshit. It really is. Totally bullshit. And that alone just makes you want to hate Lucy so much. And Pepper and Patty too for acting like a fucking bitch. In fact, this is really funny because... Which, this is amazing that um, later Schultz had... They took the voice of of the, the two lines that, that Pepper and Patty had to say to Charlie Brown while Charlie Brown was on top of the entire team. Because um, apparently... Since um, its first broadcast, um, everyone who saw this, uh, they said that most of them, most, should be all of them, had protested that, well, they could accept Lucy pulling the ball away. None of them could accept Charlie Brown for being blamed for losing the entire game. So Schultz and the producers agreed where the two lines that Pepper and Patty said by berating him had been spliced backwards like here's an example uh, at seven and a half minutes in she says okay Chuck you really goof up on that play and then around fifteen and a half minutes in it's Chuck you can't do anything right so that's why you can hardly uh, hear her and it's suddenly uh, Splice it up backwards. So, I know it's it's kind of weird though, because I, I probably would have known what uh, Pepper and Patty was about to say. But surprisingly enough, uh, the closed captioning on home video releases actually kept the line in. So there you go. I mean, if I was the team captain, yet alone the coach, I would have hired Linus to hold the ball and let Charlie Brown kick it. Then the whole team would have won. Yeah, Lucy could have been maybe a quarterback or something. Yeah, she would have blew this fucking game. I mean, no wonder this team was so fucked up. Damn, I never hired Pepper and Patty as a team captain again. Never. Because you know she's going to screw up. That's just not fucking fair. Charlie Brown deserved better than this. And that alone really sucks and would hurt the show. Um, yeah, and here's another problem, too, was that when Charlie Brown finally gets his first kiss, because he's the escort for the homecoming queen of the little redhead girl, he doesn't remember anything. 
So he doesn't remember that um, he did all of this stuff, and I think that's not fair, also. I guess with all that bullying and all that stuff that's going around, that's and maybe all that punch and everything, <laughs> or maybe because all that nervousness, having to kiss her, is just what causes him to become the life of the party. But it had never been shown, and I think that's a shame. I wish they had showed that scene. Even though it is a beautiful scene of him flying up in the air in the clouds before he fell all the way down. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, that was the problem. Also, even Pepper and Patty couldn't even understand what the zeros and the X's are. So now you can tell how how she's considered to be the worst coach yet team captain ever. Should listen to Franklin, uh, Patty. Unbelievable, man. Uh, on the other hand, though, there are good moments in the special. For one thing, you got Snoopy as the mascot. And I thought that was really sweet because the cheerleaders, you know, they're cheering it on. And, and that's where we see the entire uh, audience and fans, you know, all cheering, you know, for this particular game. And this is where they hold up all the signs that says, Snoopy, 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 and shows a picture of Snoopy. <laughs> so that, that was really cool. I love that moment. And he's also the referee, too, so it's really cool where he tries to uh, try to take a coin toss and try to figure out uh, who are heads or tails and yeah it was tails <laughs> also screws up too and got stuck with uh, the whistle uh, this is amazing and of course you know Woodstock and the rest of, of the birds are just joining in helping while well, Woodstock is the TV cameraman you know televising the whole thing uh, and I gotta say, the little red-haired girl is totally beautiful. I mean, man, Charlie Brown does get the girl, which I'm happy, very proud of him. Boy, Heather was totally beautiful. Now I can understand why, you know, redheads are so hot. But, you know, I do love redheads, and I do love brunettes and blondes, so nothing wrong with that. But, I mean, hey, you know, what do you think who's the redhead girl was? That um, That's my favorite actress. Yes, Amy Adams, and she's a redhead, too. You know, I just don't blame Charlie Brown for having her. I mean, he's so lucky. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's all I can say about it. I mean, it's, parts of it, it's good, parts of it is bad. But, I'm going to be honest, this special really deserves to be better written, needs a better storyline, and it really needs to have more good moments than bad, that's the thing, it wasn't enough, but at least I'm happy that, that Charlie Brown did got the girl, that he didn't expect it, I just wish he actually had remembered more of it. It, it does kind of erase your memory there. But again, I don't hate the special. I like it. But not enough to uh, recommend it. So, sad to say, I'm going to give it a mixed review. So that's... It's your first kiss, Charlie Brown. And I give it two and a half stars. Again, Charlie Brown gets the girl. But Lucy is a fucking bitch. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.